really wild show because it's all about animals we've never seen alive. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs have been extinct for 64 million years, but they ruled the Earth for the 100 million years before that. And that's a thousand times longer than the human race has existed. You can see dinosaur skeletons in museums all over the world, but bare bones are not enough for us because on this show we deal in real animals. And dinosaurs were exactly that. Breathing, eating, smelling and snorting great reptiles, including the largest ever on land. So, we're going to take you on a journey into the dinosaurs' world and bring them to life. Looking at animals that are alive today. Using some very heavy machinery. A few video effects. Lifelike model animation. And even using a few of you. Yeah! It's an animal detective story that starts here, in the Smithsonian Institution, in Washington. There are so many things that make up an animal. Size, shape, colour, movement, the noise it makes, what it eats, and how it looks after its young. But turning a skeleton like this into a real living animal takes a lot of detective work, and with fossils, the evidence is pretty thin. Dinosaurs came in all different shapes and sizes. In all, we know of over 400 different species, and they were all reptiles, like snakes and lizards. They were generally pretty big animals. For instance, the average dinosaur would be a lot bigger than me, and some, like this Diplodocus, were absolutely massive. At 10 tons, Diplodocus weighed much more than an elephant, with a neck and tail that made the body 30 meters long. A Patasaurus was even heavier. An adult weighed 30 tons and was four times taller than me. The biggest dinosaur we've uncovered was called a Brachiosaurus. It weighed 75 tons. And like all the sauropods, it had a long neck and tail. In fact, its head was over 40 feet off the ground. 150 million years ago, the main plants were huge tree ferns and tough pines. So a long neck was vital for reaching the best vegetation at the top of the trees. An awfully long way off the ground. So this is what the world would look like to a Brachiosaurus. And this is how a Brachiosaurus would look to the world. There's no animal on Earth built like this. It's twice the height of a giraffe and built like an elephant. And it's thought that these incredible animals lived in herds. But there were small dinosaurs too, and in this drawer is one of the smallest. It's called Consognathus, and it's a dinosaur that's the size of a chicken. And this is what it probably looked like, a road runner. Its long legs and sharp claws are just like Consognathus. It moves in the same way, with the tail for balance. But the dinosaur's tail had bones, not just feathers. So this is another dinosaur that's 50,000 times smaller than the Brachiosaurus. So, how did the huge animals move around? This is the kind of tracks they left. And lots of different fossilized trackways have been found, left in the mud at the edges of lakes and rivers. Hi. The first thing you notice about this footprint is it's enormous. How long is it? One metre. One metre long and how wide? Eight centimetres. Eighty centimetres wide. Well, that's huge. And when you look at the spacing between these footprints, you can see that the animal was walking. Back right, back left, front right, front left. And they're evenly spaced. It's thought that these animals were so heavy that they needed two of their four feet on the ground all the time, just holding up their weight. So all they can do is walk. This is what the foot of a 70-ton sauropod looked like. The toes are spread out into a soft, flat, round cushion. And you can see the toenails, the stubby toenails, here at the front. Elephants, like these African elephants, had the same problem as the dinosaurs had, and that is supporting weight. So they've got these long, thick pillars of legs. When elephants have to move fast, they can't trot or gallop. They have to keep their legs straight. So it's a quick march. Dinosaur tracks are narrow, which proves a very important but pretty boring thing. The dinosaurs stood with their legs directly underneath their body. 
Now, birds do it, we do it, but modern reptiles don't. This leopard gecko of Gemma's here has its legs sprawling out to the sides, and that makes it a very inefficient mover. OK, Gemma, just put it down and we'll see how it moves. Mm -hmm. See? Look, it just scuttles along. But some dinosaurs could move as well as modern mammals. A galloping horse has only one foot on the ground at a time, but it can move really fast. The same could be true for this dinosaur, Triceratops. It weighed about six tons, the same as an elephant, but its body was built like a rhino's. And they can gallop at 40 kilometers an hour. These fossilized dinosaur tracks are different again. Made by a large bipedal dinosaur, one that stood upright, like Comsonathus, and walked on two legs. And these feet are exactly the same, with three toes pointing out at an angle. So there's every chance that these rayas, birds from South America, are almost exactly the same as small bipedal dinosaurs. So there are modern day dinosaurs, like this flightless cassowary from Australia, reckoned to be the world's most dangerous bird. So dinosaurs were the first animals ever to stand upright. But what advantage was that? Well, it means they could reach for food off the ground, their eyes were higher so they could spot predators and prey, and they were very agile. Just like us humans! <laughs> Another great advantage of walking on two legs that's been vital to us humans is that we don't use our arms for walking on, and that's enabled us to develop these hands. Dinosaur hands were simple, but good for grasping. You won't see many modern reptiles eating like this macaw, but its feet are the closest thing to a bipedal hunting dinosaur's hands that we've got today. They're not as good as ours, but they're perfectly good enough to hold Brazil nuts like this, and they hold their food in much the same way as the dinosaur's hands would have held their prey. If you look at them closely, you can see they've got those long claws, tough skin under the foot, and the toes which close on each other from an opposite direction, something that only the most developed dinosaurs had. And they use them for digging around or catching food. A clutch of dinosaur eggs was easy meat. Well, you may think that dinosaurs are all fierce, dangerous carnivores, but as in any other natural system, most of them were vegetarians. And we know that the prodicus here was by its teeth. These chompers could have only been used for raking in vegetation. But just look at the size of the head. It's only the same size as the horse's, yet the body's much bigger than an elephant's. Now, we know that elephants spend all day eating, sometimes as much as 40 kilos a day. So how does Diplodocus get enough food through that tiny mouth to keep this massive body going? Well, at the end of the neck was a huge muscular stomach, full of stones like these found inside a dinosaur and worn smooth by grinding vegetation. Sparrows and other seed-eating birds swallow grit to do exactly the same thing as these huge dinosaurs. The system meant that sauropods could bite and grind their food at the same time. Hadrosaurs developed much more efficient plant-crushing teeth in the cheek. So what they did was they ripped up vegetation with this horny beak here, and then they passed it back along the battery of teeth ending up in the cheek. Special chewing teeth like these are something plant-eating mammals have, but modern reptiles don't. But these are killer's teeth, and when it came to predators, the dinosaurs were the masters. This is the skull of Tyrannosaurus rex, the biggest land carnivore ever. And if you just look at those teeth, you can see they're long, they're curved, and they're serrated. The serration helped them cut up the meat. Now, the skull is literally packed with muscle, and it had a devastating bite. Tyrannosaurus was a massive animal, ten times bigger than any modern carnivore. It stood upright and weighed seven tons. So this 
This is how big Tyrannosaurus was, standing 18 feet, that's 5.5 meters tall, with a head that's one and a half meters long. It was the biggest of a whole family of dinosaurs called Carnosaurs, and they're all armed with these dagger-like teeth. And it may have been that they never actually had to kill their prey at all. They simply frightened off the other carnivores and ate theirs. I mean to say, would you hang around with something like this in the neighborhood? Other bipedal dinosaurs were real hunters, just like modern lions, stalking their prey and selecting the weakest victim. So it's likely that the most dangerous hunting dinosaur wasn't Tyrannosaurus, but a smaller, faster, pack-hunting animal like this Deinonychus here. Now, Deinonychus has very long, powerful legs for running and a, a stiff tail, which it used as a rudder, but it also rested on that when it thrashed out with its feet. It did that because it had claws like this. It's 12 centimetres long and very sharp and also hinged because it was held up like this when Deinonychus was running but flicked down like this with a lot of force when it attacked. Deinonychus probably struck just like these kangaroos but armed with 12 centimetre claws. Pack hunting made cornering prey much easier so Deinonychus was a really fearsome predator. surrounded by things less than a hundred years old. It sounds pretty daft to say that the world was very different a hundred million years ago, but it was completely different. The dinosaurs Earth had one huge continent called Pangaea. That brought warm, stable weather and lush vegetation. And in the Jurassic period, there were no birds and only tiny, insignificant mammals. But in the skies and the seas, there were reptiles. Plesiosaurs probably swam like turtles do now, but hunted like seals and sea lions. And like these animals, they could still come ashore. It may be that like turtles, plesiosaurs had to return to the land to lay eggs, just like their reptile ancestors did. But that certainly wasn't the case for this reptile here. It's an ichthyosaur, perfectly designed for life in the water. And that shape is pretty familiar too. Ichthyosaurs were the reptile equivalent of dolphins. Perfect swimmers, totally committed to life in the water and never coming onto the land. And here's the proof. This extraordinary fossil that shows an ichthyosaur that seems to have died while giving birth to live young under the water. And that's exactly what dolphins and killer whales do. There were flying reptiles too. This is Dimorphodon from the early Jurassic. Its arms are wings covered in a fine membrane, just like a bat's. It was an early pterosaur. The most important group were the pteranodons, and they flew about during the Jurassic period. Now the smallest one was just sparrow size, but the largest had a seven meter wingspan, enormous. Both the wing of the microlite and the pteranodon have got one central strut running down here. Now, in this case, it's an aluminium tube. In the case of the animal, it's a finger. Also, this tough plastic covering compares very favorably with the taut skin on the animal's wing. And to steer it, all you do is shift the weight and change the wing angle. The only difference is the engine. Just like albatrosses, the generator yes to live. 
only flapping their wings to maneuver themselves after takeoff. Despite the light, we've got a very much pterosaur wing, long and thin, it generates a lot of lift. We also need the engine to help us along a bit. But probably the last thing a pterosaur needed was an engine. pterosaur was Quetzalcoatlus, with a wingspan the same as this microlite. There was another primitive aviator around with the pterosaurs. Now this is the fossil of an Archaeopteryx. And it might look like the fossil of any small dinosaur, but there's a difference. They've got wings and feathers, and it probably looked something like this. The first bird and the start of a line that eventually replaced the pterosaurs. This is the modern equivalent, the Hoetzin. Like Archaeopteryx, it doesn't fly too well, just enough to avoid ground predators. So in the Jurassic, a dinosaur became a bird, but more of that later. 135 million years ago were huge dinosaurs on the land. Plesiosaurs down there in the sea and pterosaurs up there in the skies. The earth was slowly changing shape, but then something really big happened. Flowers. Flowers are complex plants that use animals for pollination and for spreading their seeds. They had softer leaves and they produced fruit and tubers. So there was much more food at ground level. But the plant eaters had to eat with their heads facing downwards. And that could be very dangerous when Tyrannosaurus was around. They needed protection. Armour is one form. And by growing plates of bone under the skin, animals can become armoured too. But armour's heavy and takes a lot of energy to heave around so armoured animals are slow. We've seen that the image of dinosaurs as slow, lumbering animals just isn't true. But there were some dinosaurs with really heavy armour. The ankylosaurs. The ankylosaurs were plant eaters with wide mouths for grazing low vegetation, and they were very heavily armoured. Some species even had armoured eyelids. They had plates of bone underneath the skin which stretched all the way across the back and then down the sides to form a skirt just like this. So by squatting down, the skirt reached the ground and there was no way a predator could reach the soft parts underneath. An armadillo is a small scale equivalent. When it curls up, every square inch is armoured. Armour is no good on its own. You need an offensive weapon too. The ankylosaur's tail was stiffened with rods right the way down to the end where there were two huge lumps of bone. I suppose it was a bit like a mallet and it swung it from side to side. It was that powerful it could break a dinosaur's leg. Triceratops had the ideal solution. A defensive horn and enough speed to escape. But another very successful group, the hadrosaurs, had no obvious defence at all. There's another very effective way of protecting yourself from predators, and that's by staying in large groups, safety in numbers. Now these are pink-footed geese, and there must be thousands of them in this flock. And they have much the same problem as the later plant-eating dinosaurs, such as the hadrosaurs, and that is that they have to eat with their heads down. But as you see, there's always some geese with a heads up, keeping an eye open. If they spot a danger, then the lookouts honk. And if that's not enough to deter the predator, then they'll all fly off. Which is something the dinosaurs couldn't do. 
Hadrosaurs even looked like geese. They had a beak for cropping low vegetation. But one of the most interesting points was this crest here, and it's thought that it was used as a sound chamber. The crest was hollow, like a trombone, so the lookouts could make a loud alarm call. Gibbons used resonating sacs to amplify their calls, and so did some hadrosaurs. It's very likely that the dinosaurs were bright colours. Modern reptiles have scaly skins, which are a mass of different colours. Browns, yellows and greens for camouflage, but bright oranges, reds, whites and blues for display. So the hunting dinosaurs may well have been camouflaged, but the communicators, like the hadrosaurs, would have been as bright as any modern lizard. Dinosaurs also have a reputation for small brain size and stupidity, but in fact the small bipedal hunting dinosaurs had a brain the same size as that equivalent sized bird today and certainly bigger than a modern reptile. In fact the dinosaurs may have even been warm blooded with fur and feathers and with their long legs and their light bones they were very fast moving animals and one group, the Ornithomimosaurs, bird mimics had skeletons very similar to these modern flightless birds and if you watch an ostrich beating along it's a very fast animal and an ostrich dinosaur would have run like this incredibly fast at up to 70 kilometers an hour what about family life well most reptiles leave their eggs in the sand to hatch Crocodiles are about the most careful reptile parents, but some dinosaurs went much further, as scientists discovered in 1978 at a lakeside in Montana. The Montana find showed that some of the hadrosaurs nested in colonies, just like birds do, and they even scraped up a nest cup, just like these flamingos. Both the nests are mounds of earth, carefully spaced two neck lengths apart. So, 70 million years ago, a lakeside hadrosaur colony may have looked just like this. Some of the species produced very active young, ready to run around from their very first day, whilst others took much longer to develop. Now, the hadrosaurs were slow developers, and they fed their young in the nest, much like birds do. Dinosaurs were very sophisticated animals more like birds and mammals than reptiles, but 64 million years ago, they all became extinct. There may have been a huge meteorite impact or a mass of volcanic activity. It's almost certain that dust blotted out the sun and that killed off 70% of life on Earth. But 90 million years earlier, a small dinosaur gave rise to Archaeopteryx, and out of the ashes came the birds. Are they the dinosaurs in your back garden?